Good evening, everyone, and welcome to In the Know with Kat Bobineau. Today, my extra special guest will be joining us shortly. Um, he has just gotten off of work. His name is Jungle Jordan. He is an amazing person who does uh, zookeeper and science communication. So it looks like he's joining now. Let me go ahead and add him in. Good evening. Hi. How's it going? It's pretty good. How about yourself? Good. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I was uh, just got home from work. Not a problem. Not a problem. How are you doing this evening? Pretty good. Uh, it was a nice day. It was a beautiful day today here in Washington. Nice uh, sunny weather. Um, the zoo was, wasn't crowded or anything today, but you know, it's a good little turnout for the day. Well, then that just go ahead and lead us right into it. Where are you located exactly and which zoo? I, I live in Bellevue, Washington. Grew up in Seattle, Washington my whole life. Um, I work at a smaller zoo in Issaquah called Cougar Mountain Zoo. Hmm. Okay, okay. So how did you get started with that? Uh, with what? Working with animals? Um, well, yeah, well, let's start at the very beginning. How did you, uh, when did your love of animals come to fruition? I mean, I've always enjoyed animals. I've always thought they were really cool and fascinating. Um, I would say I you know, grew up being in my backyard, sitting and, and like looking at the birds, watching the birds. We used to have these uh, eagles, these bald eagles that would fly um, and like they would nest nearby our backyard so we, I could see them. Um, and they would like raise their babies and they would fly off every single year. And um, I would sit there and play with like, looking at bugs and stuff in the garden and things and watch all like different kind of animal movies like Free Willy. I was huge into Free Willy. <laughs> I love Free Willy. I, I was a huge Free Willy fan <laughs> myself. I cannot lie. Yeah. So that's that's basically where, you know, kind of like where it stemmed from. And like I grew up with uh anger management problems. Um so kids used to always, you know, bully me like will try to bully me because I thought it was funny to see how mad I would get, how quickly, how quickly, quickly I got mad. And the fact that I liked animals. So that was like, you know, double that. So <clears throat> it was easy. For, like I was like the easy target. But the thing with me is I didn't, I didn't like take bullying. So like I would get into fights and a lot of that stuff. And so I felt, I always felt calm and happy around animals. And I felt like they were misunderstood. So I just felt like, like we kind of like were the same. And so I had this connection with animals that way. And I felt like there was something, you know, I need, I needed to help them. That's kind of how it started. And uh, when I was 11 years old, I became, I was allowed to become a volunteer at Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle. And they, they took me in. My mom really pushed for it. They don't take like 11 year olds as volunteers, especially mm -hmm. back then. But um, she pushed and pushed and pushed for it. And then they allowed me to be there. And I was one of the youngest volunteers ever. So that was really nice. That is cool. Cause I mean, I tried to volunteer around that age and nobody was taking me. So, right. you know, jealousy level a little bit, but that's really good for you that mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that was something that was able to happen. No, I, I definitely enjoyed my time at the zoo. Like it, it, it I feel like it helped change me a little bit too. Like mm -hmm. I feel like I, it, it gave me focus, focus and, like I noticed my anger, you know, kind of like was, you know, slowly down, like going downhill a little bit, which is, which is good. You know, it was slowly going away, but mm -hmm. um, it was just a tough, it was just, just a tough life, you know, with all the fighting and suspend suspensions and all that stuff. So it was, it was hard, but animals helped me, but, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think it, uh, it helped you grow out of all the fighting and hopefully the people who were bullying you learned that uh, you weren't the one to be bullied. They learned. They learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, I didn't. It was weird. I don't know why it was always me. Like they, I, they thought that was hilarious. Like because I would just get angry at the smallest things. They thought it was so funny. So, yeah. Kids, you know, I, I'm, I don't know. They just yeah. think some of the things that they think is funny as an adult. You're like, I, I don't understand. But okay. Not funny at all. <laughs> Yeah. But just to remind everyone, we are currently live on Facebook, YouTube, and um, Periscope. So if you have comments or questions, please put, 
put them in the chat. Um, they will come up. I will be able to read them and even put them on screen. So thank you everyone who's joining us thus far. We're here with Jungle Jordan out in Washington. Um, and we're talking about one of my favorite topics, which is animals. So um, growing up, you felt like animals were your piece. You started at 11. Where did it go from there? And before I even give you that, you got a Hi, Jordan from Auntie Colleen. Oh, she, <laughs> hi, Colleen. <laughs> she, she, Colleen, uh, Colleen follows me everywhere and she, like on my platforms, and she's always been a big supporter of mine. Um, we're not related. Good. Her name is okay. Auntie Colleen, but you know, she, she, she's just a big supporter, which is, you know, she's a really nice person. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, back to you. So, after 11, volunteering, what was next? Let's see. So, um, sorry, hold on. I'm sharing your stream on my page real quick just to make sure people. Please do. Yeah. Everybody else who's watching, feel free to share it as well. I did it earlier, but uh, <laughs> I think people kind of missed the memo. That was, it was way earlier. Anyways, um, so it's done. Uh, let's see. So, 11 years old, and then, and then, the, then they created a teen program because the zoo realized there was more people out there. The, you know, more kids out there that wanted to be, to be around, you know, animals and wanted to learn mm -hmm. how to be uh, an animal, animal care professional. So they started a team program called Zoo Corps. And so I did that from 13 to 18 or so, maybe 17, because at that point I went to college. Mm -hmm. so I ended up getting a free ride to University of Washington. Um, so that was nice. Um, a free then, ride is always nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I definitely because I applied for a lot of scholarships, and then I ended up getting lucky. Uh, so I got lucky with that with the scholarships. Um, so I have no college debt now, which is great. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, not everyone can say that. So congratulations. Yeah. Um, and then, so after that, I went to college, uh, and then I got my degree. Did my senior my senior thesis on Komodo dragons at the zoo that I was at with those with those dragons and did some work, some cool work with them. And then um, after that, I did an internship mm -hmm. with uh, a zoo, a zookeeper internship to learn how to become a zookeeper guy, kind of thing, like to learn the steps, like to see if I fit in this field. Um, and then um, and then I got my first zoo job after that at a place called Northwest Trek. And okay. So yeah, so and then multiple I, I've had I've worked at every zoo in Washington so far, oh. like every accredited zoo, which is nice. <laughs> that is. <laughs> yeah, that is very nice. So uh, with all of this stuff that you've done, um, first of all, let's go back. What was your degree in? It's a mouthful. <clears throat> <laughs> all right. So it's a bachelor's of science in environmental science, resource management. Uh Concentration of wildlife conservation. So, okay. short words is wildlife conservation. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the that's the full, that's the main thing. Yeah. I'll oh, I'll good. So, uh, what was it about kimono dragons that caught your eye? Well, at the time, some the the pro the program or the project was environmental enrichment for the dragons because I would always go to the zoo. I've always loved dragons and I've always thought they needed more love. Um, and I noticed that, you know, the, the dragons are hanging out. And one of the keepers there at the time told me that the dragons were, uh, since they were, since they're, they live such easy lives, um, you know, it's, it's natural for the dragons to bask in the sun, right? To bask in the sunlight to get, you mm -hmm. know, like they do right. To get their energy, but they would do it longer than, you know, comparatively into the to the with the wild, because they had easy access to food, so they didn't have to go search for it. So they're, they're really just right. out, they're hanging out, they're living their life. <laughs> but what would happen was they would develop arthritis because they would hit advanced advanced age compared to the their wild counterparts. So they would get you know they get older, and like you know, and uh, they would live longer, and their joints were becoming bad. So because they weren't mm. using them. Right. As much. So my project was trying to see if I could get them more active uh, during zoo hours 
with, um, you know, naturalistic enrichment or things that's to stimulate natural behaviors. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did things like scent trails. Like I put blood trails through the exhibit to get them up and smelling for it to see if they could find where they was coming from. Cause they would in the wild, they'd be finding wounded or dead, you know, dying animals right. uh, from blood trails. And then um, I buried uh, a ball, a boomer ball, like uh, something you would give to a dog. So it has a hole in it and you put like food and treats inside of it. Mm -hmm. And I buried that um, to basically simulate, uh, stimulate digging, digging behaviors. Cause in the wild, some, of the Komodo dragons will go to the beaches of Komodo, Komodo Islands and look for sea turtle eggs. So yeah. I tried to, you know, get that going. And uh, there was a couple of- What did you put in the ball? Uh, it was a, a dead dead rat. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, um, so yeah, again, we are live Facebook, YouTube, Periscope. You got comments and questions, make sure you put them in there. So it looks like we got, what animals do you work with in the zoo from Jessica? Uh, currently I, my position is kind of interesting right now. I'm a mix of all kinds of stuff. My title right now is, um, marketing and education specialist. And on the side, I do a little bit of zookeeping. So I'm not technically fully responsible for any animals right now, but I do help out with, um, you know, things like reindeer, wallaby, uh, tigers, occasionally wolves, things like that okay. uh, oh, with, with the macaws a lot. So as an education staff right now, uh, we do a lot of the outreach. So I'm mm -hmm. talking to the kids, I'm doing virtual experiences with, with kids and things. Um, and I work with some of our ambassador animals. So some of the macaws, some of the large parrots are ambassadors. So I'll have them like, you know, with me on my arm, talking to people mm -hmm. on the camera on screen. So those are some of my, uh, some of the animals I work with right now. Okay, cool. Um, so that's that's one of the things I guess we were gonna get to, but it would just jump the gun a little bit to ask you about what you work with currently. Uh, but we're gonna go back to after you graduated college, you started working at the zoo. What were some of the first animals you started working with? Okay, my first, ooh, well, let's talk about my internship. That internship was probably one of my favorite things I've ever done. Um, okay. I, my internship, I got to uh, help like have play time with baby clouded leopards. Um, I, yeah. I'm sorry, my jealousy level just kind of peaked a little bit, but that's okay, that's okay, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> the baby <laughs> clouded leopards, they were a lot of fun. Um, that was an experience. Uh, so the clouded leopards at the, at the facility I was at, they had to be hand raised because um, Clouded, clouded leopard moms are notoriously bad, bad moms. Like they don't <clears> raise them, they don't kind of just abandon them. Yeah. So they had to be pulled and uh, bottle fed, bottle raised, and you know they needed playtime. So I would go in there and you know hang out with the babies. So that was fun. That's not a big, a main part of zookeeper's job at all, though. Like mm -hmm. the majority of our job is cleaning. Um, who else did I work with? Then that was uh, the Sumatran tigers. Uh, Malayan taper, um, crested porcupines, Siamangs, gibbons, uh, oh, small clawed otters, they were really fun, <laughs> and um, a Noah's. It's like a it's like a it's like a little like a little almost like a very tiny cow. Oh, okay, yeah, that's really cool. They were a lot of fun. Well, that sounds like it is a lot of fun, you know, getting to work with a, a broad spectrum of animals, especially carnivores. So I know a lot of times mm -hmm. people want to work with carnivores. They think it's the fun aspect, like playing with the, the babies. But I know there's a lot more to it. So if you could just explain what more goes into actually working with these animals. OK, so especially with carnivores, um, you know, the thing is that people uh, get a misconception because of you know what they see on TV and what they probably saw on like Tiger King, which they're not, they're not um, real animal care professionals. They're kind of, anyways, I'm going to talk about that. I mean, if you lost an arm, I mean, that just kind of, that kind of. Well, you know, dangerous things can happen. And so the thing yeah. is, like, we don't, we don't go in with these animals, right? Like, uh, so with 
dangerous carnivores, you know, and larger, more dangerous herbivores, even, you know, we do what's called protected contact. So there's always a barrier in between us and that animal. So like, say, mm-hmm. for instance, I worked with hippos, right? They're technically a dangerous animal, even though the ones we worked with were really sweet and they they love us. I don't think they would do anything to us, but we don't go in there just because there is the ability that they have to be dangerous. So right. We don't want to die. So we, <laughs> we manage them the way we the way we need to. And um and so how we manage them is um we do uh tr- training and conditioning. So <clears throat> with this training, we basically teach the animals behaviors or we just capture behaviors that they would technically do on them on their own. Like we're not like teaching them to jump through hoops and things like, you know, we're, we're pulling out natural behaviors to help us help them. Like Mm -hmm. we do, uh, like say for instance, we've trained, we train tigers to come up like next to a fence, you know, and kind of present their tail so we can do blood draws. And like we're like we've trained them to to you know to focus on allowing us to take syringes and needles and drawing blood. So that process, it's surprisingly uh, it's not as it's not as hard as that sounds. I mean, well, I, I mean it is, but for someone who's done blood draws, it's it can come fairly easy to these big cats because they're really smart. Mm-hmm. And you know they don't they but a lot of these animals don't understand that you're just trying to help them. You know, so it takes a lot of work and dedication. Yes, I think the one of the most difficult things from what I understand is the actual training, getting them to come to the fence, stay still, do all that stuff. Like that's the the harder part. Once they actually get that, it's a lot more easier to mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. do what you need to do with them. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, it's definitely a learning, a learning uh, you know, process. And the animals, they, a lot of the animals really love training because it's a time that they get to spend with their keepers who they, you know, we, they really love us and we really love them, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's a time that they get treats and snacks, (laughs) Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, with a lot of the animals, the quickest way to their heart is through their stomach, but some of the animals don't require, don't require food to, to really enjoy, you know, you know, like to, to be happy. You know, I have some of the birds that I work that I've worked with, like some of the macaws. You know, some of these birds really just enjoy being around certain individuals. And they don't need treats. Right. So they, they 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 just they they are happy to be in certain people's presence. I can get that. I've heard that about the. Uh, I guess you can call them the more. I hate to say it like this, but the more intelligent birds, you know, the more sociable birds tend mm-hmm. to be kind of like cats where mm-hmm. they pick a person that they really like and they actually do things for the person they really like. Yep. Um, and unfortunately, if they don't like you, then, you know, it's not a lot you can do because they're just going to be like, whatever. I don't I've care. definitely seen a lot of that. To say the truth. I've <laughs> seen, like I've, it's 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 unfortunate. Like there's a bird at uh, work who's who's a crane and she's not the biggest fan. She's not the biggest fan of. Uh, some of the lady, some of the female keepers, <laughs> because um, she was she's thirty four years old and she was hand raised. Wow. Yeah, she was she was hand raised by a tall male. So she saw me immediately and she like fell in love with me. So that was really nice. And I know I don't even work with her. Like I just say hi to her. <laughs> she's, she loves me. And yeah. Like, some of the lady keepers, she will try to kill. So it's yeah, that's just. It just it is what it is, you know. Yeah. Animals have personalities. Yeah, they do. Yeah, <laughs> they really do. So, uh, tell us, what is a typical day of work for you? Now, as a zookeeper, um, I'll I'll tell that story because no one really wants okay. to know about me sitting in an office. <laughs> uh, as a zookeeper, you know, you're up. You know, earlier than most jobs, I would say, like, you know, we, we're not a nine to five. We're like a depends on where you are. We're like a seven to f- to four kind of job. You know, it's a seven to three thirty, seven to four. Yeah. Um, but we get in there. The first thing we do is we check on all of our animals and mm-hmm. we make sure everyone's alive. Everyone's behaving normally. Um, 
you know, and then we go around, do our rounds and we do our morning feeding. And then after that, once everybody's off exhibit and they're eating, we go onto the exhibit because we, we do shifting, unless it's an animal that we can be on exhibit with them. Mm-hmm. But usually, you know, for me, I feel like all the animals I worked with, I always work with empty exhibits for the most part. Um, I've, Cause I've worked with a lot of, with a wide range of animals, like, you know, dangerous, you know, like grizzly bears and, and other animals like that, but they're super fun, by the way. Um, but no, so I would, you know, you go in there, you clean, you make sure everything's, you know, ready to go. And we try to be off of the main exhibits by the time the zoo opens. Okay. Because, you know, people don't really pay to see us cleaning. You know, they, they don't want to, <laughs> you know, I mean, but it's a part of our job. You know, some areas we can't, we can't not be seen while we're cleaning. And most zookeepers, to tell you the truth, most zookeepers, unlike me, I'm different. Most zookeepers don't want to be seen by people. Mm. You know, like I'm fine with the public. Like I enjoy talking right. to people because that's like that, most of the keepers won't want to avoid being <laughs> questioned and, you know, right. and, and talked to. I, I don't, I, I think it's, I, they're there to learn, you know. But anyway, so you do all that, you're clean, you've done cleaning the morning, cleaning animals going to exhibit. Now you're doing behind the scenes cleaning, clean, mm. clean, clean barns, bedrooms, night houses, mm-hmm. all those different things. You're cleaning all those areas, and then you're prepping like medications and all these the diets for the next day. You know, diets for lunch, diets for depends on what animal. Like with otters, I worked with otters. We had to feed them three to four times a day, and sometimes even five times a day because their metabolisms are so fast. Right, they need to keep eating because they eat it in like thirty minutes to an hour. They poop it out. Like that's how somebody. <laughs> no, seriously. Like that's I how it, it, it's I crazy. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, then uh, sometime in the middle of the day, you either like you have lunch, and then you'll have like a talk, like like a public talk that you have to do, um, or then you do like training sessions, things like that. Bunch of stuff like gotcha. that. Yeah, and so now, as marketing, you more so at the desk and. <laughs> Doing videos with the the kids. So since since my job is marketing, social media, and education mostly, uh, like today I had to give a, um, I did a live stream for a class that paid for a, like they 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 wanted a, um, you know, a like like I like me to teach their class basically about endangered animals. So I did a live stream presentation for them. Um, today and look at so that's basically what I've been doing mostly since we can't visit the schools right now. Like right. I'm doing live streams. I am responsible for our social media, so I go in out and take photos. I take videos, things like that. Um, and the marketing side of things, that's definitely the more quote unquote. Unfortunately, it's more boring. But <laughs> you know it's how the zoo has to get noticed. You know, like we have to advertise things like that. So. Makes sense. Makes sense. So um, I, I want to take the time to thank everyone who's joined us on Facebook, Periscope, or uh, YouTube. We got a question from the audience, and that's from Janet. And what she says is, how or do you train a snake? Well, I personally haven't trained any snakes, but it's literally, it's interesting. A snake actually can be trained. It's You, tr- you take the same basic concepts you learn with other animals. Like those same basic concepts can be translated to literally almost any animal out there, you know, that's capable of figuring things out, processing. Right. Like um, you could almost you could almost target train a snake, you know, like um, say, for instance, certain snake like you have a target. Let's say this battery is the snake's target. This is the snake. In order for the snake to to get his meal, you know, we have to say, all right, here, snake, target. He has to come boop his nose. Once he boops it, he gets his treat. He gets his he gets his food. So that's called um, positive reinforcement. So I said, good, thank you. I gave him a cue to hit the hit the hit the pole or hit the target, and um, you know, it's 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 all about. Um, you know, just just your training style. It's it's really interesting. Snakes can hundred percent be trained, um, but yeah, like the thing is, what it depends on what you need that snake to do. You know, because you have to think about what 
these animals are capable of doing. Like I can't mm -hmm. say, hey, snake, jump. You know, <laughs> it's, it's something they physically, it's physically impossible for them to do. And right. why would they need to do that? You know, so. Certainly well, I wish my undergrad professor knew to train snakes because I did my research project on snakes and I got bit quite a bit. So, you know, it is what it is. You, you got to take the the wins with the losses. So. Which which what snakes did you work on? Did you uh... um, Burmese pythons and diamondback water snakes? So it was the it was the diamondbacks, of course. You know, pythons, they're gonna they're gonna squeeze you, but uh -huh. diamondbacks, they bite. Where where do you live? Where did you where did you do this undergrad? In uh Alabama, actually. I went to Stillman College. It's an HBCU, but I did my research project at the University of Alabama in herpetology. So that was my research project. Well, that's really cool. I I uh it's always nice to see other people that enjoy snakes. Um, oh yeah! So many people are are afraid of uh, the reptile world. So you know the reptiles and the and the amphibians, all the, all the herps. You know people are really scared of them. So I I enjoy talking about those guys because they don't get enough love. And yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I'm not trying to I like be. The, like, and I mean, you know, I like the komodo dragon because I like the the bacteria in the spit. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> well, we don't have to talk about that. That's kind of their negative side. But, you know, I like that part of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I am. A, I never got into the world of zoology and stuff like that. But I do love animals from the tiniest ones to the bigger ones. I actually yeah. prefer the bigger ones because the tinier ones can get away from you quicker and hide and be in little crevices. So the bigger yeah. they are, the better they are for me. <laughs> okay. That's funny. I'm serious, you know, like yeah. tarantulas, love them. You know, the little tiny spiders that could just go blue, 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 and just be gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just give you your space over there. <laughs> no, I know I know a lot of people have a very rational fear of spiders and, and you know, I, I get it. You know, they, they, they're very quick and they look like they, they look very dangerous. But you know, to me, they're just they all these animals have their important roles. You know, oh, every, yes. all these animals fit in the ecosystem in one way or another even animals such as as ticks and and mosquitoes things like that because that's population control you know right. as long as as long as they're in check because let's say you have mosquitoes right mosquitoes kind of pick off the you know the the uh you know less healthy animals and, and you know kind of, you yeah. just, just control so things don't get out of out of hand populations will get out of hand but then you have bats, animals like bats eating the mosquitoes. So right. let's check some balances. Right, right. You, you know, know, I mean, not to go down the rabbit hole, but basically if we didn't interfere, interfere, there'd be a lot of checks and balances. And as you can see, my animal decided he wanted to join in. I did not invite him to this, but uh, <laughs> thank you for being a part. Uh, uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I always preach that to anyone who will listen to me is like, if we didn't interfere, like if you didn't, I live in California I'm from Oakland. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't build your house into the woods, you wouldn't have to worry about a bobcat being in your backyard. So, you, you know, it, don't, don't get mad at the bobcat for being a bobcat. Right. But <laughs> you exactly. built your house. And they were there, there first. They were there first. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we got a question from a 10 year old. Christian says, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animals, I love cheetahs, Christian. <gasps> Shut the front door. Jordan, I feel like you are like my soul <laughs> brother from another mother because I yeah. love the cheetah. But please continue. Yeah. No, cheetahs, they, I don't know. I don't know why. Like ever since I was a kid, I've always just been super fascinated with them. And just like, I love their coats. They're just amazing cats. To me, cheetahs, you know, I don't. I don't know if you've ever, ever met a cheetah before. Their personalities are very unique. They're not. They're not like other big cats. They are very dog-like. It's very weird because they're very shy. They're very shy, and and it's hard for them to break out of their own shell. And which is why, at a lot of zoos, you'll see them as ambassador animals and like being able to walk around like, on a leash around the zoo like a dog. Because they raised them, they raised the cheetah from from a really with young age dogs. with dogs, and the dogs will basically 
you know, give them confidence and pull them out. Like the dog is like, like the leader and the cheetah is like, okay, it's okay. We're good. We're safe here. <laughs> you know, they're, Cause they're just very, very skittish by nature. So, yes. yeah. Okay. So now let me throw my two cents in there okay. because, um, you know, as a biology major, you're looking at the, uh, kingdom phylum, all of that stuff. I'm not even going to go into it, but once you get to the family of cats and then you look at the evolutionary tree, the cheetah starts to break off once yeah. you get past the family because they're do more dog-like, because their feet are off the ground twice per stride, because their fur is different, because they clip it, they chirp and things like that instead of growl and, and roar. And mm -hmm. they have that long tail that's like a rudder. So, you know, yeah. I'm on the biology nerd side of cheetahs, but I love cheetahs because I always be like, my name is Cat, but I'm not like everybody else. I'm that one cat that's different from other people. <laughs> but you know, it's yeah, just like a yeah. cheetah. They're in the a cat family, but they're different from other cats. Yeah. No, with you know, it's it's pretty cool. Like, um, so there's only so they belong with the the purring cats, right? So they're considered a big cat, but they are technically you know, a purring cat. So they purr like uh, same with with cougars and you know animals like like the like the serval. You know, so these guys you know are all these cats that can't roar, and it's be it's because of the um, hyoid hyoid bone. Uh, it's either connect or not connect, and that allows you know it's what creates that roaring sound. Um, so like animals like tigers and lions are you know roaring cats. And the you know, cats like the snow leopard, that one always throws me off. I used to work with snow leopards. I used to always work with snow leopards, and I swear they can roar. Like I swear <laughs> they they do, but some say they've never really heard it. But I I don't know. I feel like I've heard them, but they're well, interesting cats. Yeah, I I love cats. Not because my name is Cat, but I just do. But cheetahs mm -hmm. are all my all-time favorite animal, and my second favorite is the blue whale, and it's only because we don't know anything it's about cool. it. Interesting. That's that's an interesting second favorite. That's an interesting favorite. I, I I've had many second favorites, <laughs> and <laughs> I would say it's funny you said that you said a whale because one of mine um, they're related to whales, but not exactly whales. But one of my second favorite animals are killer whales, even though they are mm -hmm. technically dolphins. Right. You know, I've always loved because again, <laughs> free willy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I loved. I don't. I feel like every kid in the '90s had some kind of obsession with Free Willy. You know, yes. like like the, Free Willy was something special. He was something. He was different. He was an amazing. Yeah. I don't know. And following that storyline was, you know, really sad towards the end there, unfortunately. But yeah, yeah, and and like for me, like I I got to see killer whales out in the, in wildlife, which is really awesome. But my dream is to see a blue whale. And I love the blue whale because as big as it is, we don't know a lot about it because we don't know no. a lot about the ocean floor. Right. So, you know, I'm just I, I'm fascinated with the fact that the biggest animal on the planet we don't know much about. And that's, it's elusive. That's funny. No, we've we've actually had over here, we've had sightings of blue whales um, and, uh, over here by Seattle, up uh, over by the uh, ocean over there. Um, they they they're not like frequent visitors, but they've definitely been spotted up here, which is nice. Um, we do get killer whales up here, fair amount. Um, we get gray whales. Mm -hmm. um, I think we get minky whales too. We Washington is a very unique area. I don't know if you've ever mm -hmm. been up here. Um, mm -mm. We have a we like we literally have every type of ecosystem and climate and you know zone. Like we have temperate forests, we have rainforests, we have mm -hmm. deserts, we have grasslands, we have you know um, islands, we have all these different areas, old growth forests. We have everything, wetlands. We have literally every type of ecosystem in one state. Which so I like living in Washington. Yeah, I plan on moving here soon. Hopefully not soon, but you know within the next year maybe. But it's. I, I do like Washington a lot. So if, if people that are watching, if you've never, never been up to Washington, definitely come visit. Well, where are you from originally? Here, Seattle, Washington. <laughs> okay. like I've been here, that's why I want to leave. I've been here all my life. 
I'm ready to go. Gotcha. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can come on to California. We got all that stuff here too, for the most part. Well, so. that's 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 kind of the plan. It was it was a thought at least. <laughs> it was a thought. It was it's a thought. Well, well uh, Carrie is giving you positive vibrations. Well, thank you. So. <laughs> Hopefully, you will. Yeah, we got a lot of that stuff in California. It's just expensive here, but we got a lot of that yeah, stuff. I, here. I mean, it's not it's not really cheap up here either. It's it's expensive in Seattle. It's, I think they did like a they did one of the little like little testing things for um you know cost of living or whatever in the cities. And Seattle was definitely on the top ten list. Mm. Uh, cities, gotcha. I can't remember how high it was, but it was pretty high up there. And then um, same with traffic level. California was high. New York was up there. Not as high as... New York wasn't as high as I thought it would be. Um, but Seattle was up there, too. Unfortunately, we kind of... Our traffic downtown really sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, trust me. I'm, I'm in California. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know it sucks. Well, mm-hmm. I know sucky traffic. Um, yeah. But, anywho. Uh, yes. I grew up loving Jungle Jack Hanna. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, who were who were someone you looked up to in <sighs> this field? You know, I really enjoyed as a kid. I really enjoyed watching the Krat Brothers. Um, oh, back, okay. back before they were the Wild Krats, before mm-hmm. all that. So, like, they were like they were just the Krat Brothers, and then Zabumafu came out when I was a little older. Um, but I also grew up watching um, Jeff Corwin. Mm-hmm. I liked him a whole lot. He, I, I mean, I, I was all right. I, I liked uh, Steve Irwin, you know, Crocodile Hunter. I liked him, but mm-hmm. I liked Jeff Corwin more just because I liked his goofiness and his like funny little jokes. And, you know, his, he always wore them tight shirts and them short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Those always made me laugh. Like, I'm like, man, are you comfortable out there? Like, he's like, he's always cracking me up. Like, uh, no, he's, no, he's super cool though. But, um, I mean, I can't imagine me wearing that, but yeah, I. Uh, Why not? What's wrong with the shorts and the tight shirt and the shorts? Nah, <laughs> nah, I'm a little too lanky for that. Um, <laughs> I. It's funny. It's funny because I actually kind of. So last year, I don't know if you've seen my series. I started called Backyard Animal Treasures or Animal Adventures. So I would go like you know in my backyard, you know backyard, like local spots and look for animals and. Um, I, I basically had like a uniform for that. Like I was wearing my khaki shorts, you know, my <laughs> Nike socks and my boots and my, uh, I wore this, I wear this vest every now and then, like a green vest and a black t-shirt. And I was getting, I was beginning to get videos from parents, uh, of their kids dressed like me oh. looking for animals. And I'm that's like, cool. Wow, that's that's pretty interesting. That's like I didn't really. I, it's funny because I wasn't really trying to give myself a uniform. Yeah, but, but I feel like khaki shorts and boots are the uniform of someone who works with animals. Yeah, that's that's kind of, <laughs> not, that's kind of what I have I the hear. cargo shorts. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The cargo shorts. Yeah. My my I, I so my brother, he's uh pretty into fashion, you know. And uh, I remember I wore them a couple two years ago. Maybe I wore the cargo shorts. Um, around him, and he was like, "Cargo shorts, huh?" Like <laughs> he, he kind of just gave me that. I was like, "You got a problem with my shorts, man?" <laughs> They're very useful in the animal world. You, yeah, you know, know, when you're outside. Yeah, he just. I guess they're not like they weren't like what was in at the time, which they're kind of. I think they're. I don't know what. I don't. I don't really care about that. You know what I mean? Like, I, but he does uh, clearly, and I was thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> no, I get it. I'm. I've never been fashionable. You know, I always tell yeah. people. When you work in a lab or you work with animals, you don't want to wear your best stuff anyway, because nah. it's going to get messed up. So. Yeah. Oh, a couple of things uh, from Krista, which is thank you. So interesting. What was your first job in the animal field? And she, they love all the shows that we were talking oh, thank about. You, Krista. But, <laughs> we'll go back to the other one. What was your first job in the animal field? Well, okay. Um, so after all my volunteering and internship stuff, my first, well, before the internship, um, I actually had got a job at one of the zoos and it was called an exhibit attendant. So exhibit attendant is like a person that kind of hangs out uh, by the exhibits, um, 
giving out information, helping zookeepers every now and then with some stuff behind the scenes. <laughs> and um, one of my main jobs, Sorry. Was actually, you're fine. One of my main jobs was actually uh, collecting money for animal encounters. So we would do this thing called the giraffe feed and the, uh, and the rhino feeding or the elephant feeding. Um, and we would basically, so at, my job was to be down below, like, um, like having people in a lineup, telling them the rules, uh, taking their money and letting them walk past me up to the platform to where the giraffe were doing, doing the feeding. So with me, I, I'll never forget this because apparently I did think I did a good job because um, there was a lot of uh, comments written to the to the to the zoo offices about me at the time. Uh, I used to treat because it was a high, hot summer days, right? So just, we're in the sun baking. So I remember to keep people happy, I would kind of do like stand up comedy with them in line. So I would just I would just be making people just crack up because like I didn't want to like give them giraffe facts because that's like the the zookeeper at the top. That's the, their job, right? To right. give you facts about the giraffe while you're feeding them. So I didn't want to do that. So I had to like do something else to make them happy. You know, not all the attendants did this, but that was just something that I chose to do because I, I enjoy talking to people and I enjoy seeing people laugh. I'm not a comedian, but I have a way of talking to people sometimes, I think, that can kind of be funny my wife doesn't think so though <laughs> she doesn't think i'm funny at all she does not think i'm funny like she'll laugh Usually, every now and then. all right yeah. i mean i think i'm i think i'm hilarious sometimes but my <laughs> partner just be like yeah why <laughs> be like well i thought yeah. it was I thought it was funny so yeah no um, I, yeah it, I, it's weird she's she just her, has heard everything she's heard all my stuff well, that's probably why too. Yeah. Uh, oh well, somebody uh kind of laughed at that, Ashley. Ashley, <laughs> but uh, that's cool. I, I get it. You know me. I I don't know. I think I drop animal facts all the time on certain things. Like somebody say something, I'd be like, "Well, actually," and I'm pretty sure that's, people hate that. I'm yeah, okay, pretty sure right. people hate that about me. <laughs> the actually thing. My wife always makes fun of me for that because. This is something that I can't stop no matter where I am. You know, even if I'm at a zoo that I don't work at. If I'm walking, <laughs> no, seriously, if I'm walking by and I hear an incorrect fact that you are saying to a friend, a loved one, family member, or whatever, like, you know, and, you know you're saying something wrong, I do this thing. <laughs> I go, excuse me, what? actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you, know, you didn't ask me, but I'm going to tell you anyways real quick. And they'll be like, oh, do you work here? I'm like, no, 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 no. I just uh just thought you should know. Yeah, I, you know, I do it all the time. I can't help it. And it depends on what it is. Like, if it's something that's like they just keep going on and on about it, I'm like, no, I gotta correct this. Like, I which is what like in my zoo uniform, it's way easier for me to do because it's it's warranted for me to jump in, like and give you a correct right. fact. I don't want people leaving with the wrong stuff because that, that, that's how social media works. Like social media, somebody wrong right. incorrect facts running out there just because someone said, "Oh, oh," you yeah. know, like these internet scientists. But I'm not gonna say anything. But yeah, these yeah, internet right. scientists. Oh so, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I like to do. I'm the well actually guy, and my wife thinks it's hilarious. But well, I'm it. not that bad. Thank you. No, I'm bad. It's bad. I, I'm not that bad. Like you know, I'm I'm more of the whisper behind your back. Like if I hear it, I'd be like, you know, they're wrong, right? You know. <laughs> That's not correct. But I don't I don't actually stop people and be like, you're wrong, you know. But if you I, don't I, ask me either, because if you ask me, I might start just rattling on. So. It depends. It depends on the, the scenario, though. Like, I will actually, like, it depends. If if they just say it real quick and walk away, like, without hanging around, I won't say anything. I'll just, like you said, I'll kind of do like you and I'll just whisper it to whoever I'm with. Like, I'll ask mm -hmm. them. That's that's wrong. Like, <laughs> I, I will most times approach people and be like, mm, "Hey, I know you guys. I'm just I was just listening to you guys' conversation. I know you didn't ask me, but orangutans are apes. They're not monkeys. You know, monkeys are different than apes. I made a whole <laughs> video about it. I watched my page. There's a video on there. I don't, you know, that's the other thing. I don't usually. I never. Um, I never promote Jungle Jordan ever. 
I never do. Huh. Like I, that's just because I, I don't know why I don't like my videographer and like my whenever we go out like to film like at the zoo, like if I'm bringing my camera people with me at the zoo and we're filming and people are asking, oh, what do you what do you who are you filming for? What are you doing? Like I never was just saying, oh, yeah, I go, oh, I'm, just, I'm just making an educational video about so and so. And then my videographer goes, yeah, he's Jungle Jordan. <laughs> like I'm like. I'm a nobody, man. Relax. I'm nobody. Like <laughs> that's why no one's watching me right no, now. I mean, you you got a lot of followers on social media. I aim to be like that one day, but I'm terrible at it. You know, I'll just be like, I, I like science, and then my partner be like, No, yeah. she's got a master's degree in biology. She loves animals. Ask her anything about them, and ask her anything about science. I'll be like, Not anything. A true scientist will tell you they don't know. Is the right. internet scientist who'd be right. like, I know everything. Yes, I like know. I do. I hundred percent know. I don't know. And like I, I know. Let me say this is like the best way I can explain it. I know a little, little bit about a lot of about things. A lot of things. <laughs> so that I feel me. like uh, I think we you've been missing. Like yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to yeah. impose on the wife, but like we just you know like I, I feel like you're like a brother from another mother because this is oh, the stuff you. I be saying. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. No, I, I. Okay. That's the thing. What's what social media has done for me. I've met a lot of people that look just like you and I, you know, because of my page, like that are interested in animals, like, and, you know, or we were kind of hidden. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like we didn't, we don't really promote ourselves and what we do enough, which is why I'm trying to use my platform to make it more normalized. Right. Right. You know, for... And that's the thing is like, like for me, I really love animals, but I have come to the point where what I really like is meeting different people in different fields and talking about them. Like, you know, if if one day a zoo was to say, okay, come on and, and be our spokesperson for animals, I would I'd do it in a heartbeat. But I got jaded in our zoo out here. I'm not going to say which zoo because they don't deserve it. But like seven years ago, I was like, I promote, I approached the zoo and was like, hey, you know, I don't want to work with, you know, I don't want to be a zookeeper or something like that. But what I want to do is promote the zoo and promote the animals, you know, and do fun facts and stuff like, like junk, uh, Jack Hanna used to do. Mm -hmm. But they were like, we hate Jack Hanna. We don't make animals do anything for humans. If they're out and you see them, that's good. If they're not, fine. Like, we don't do anything like that. Boo to that. Well, I mean, it's like, okay, I wasn't trying to. Uh, well, that's that's the thing. Like, I mean, I mean, that last part, they probably just assumed that you wanted to, like to do like tricks and stuff, which is probably not what you're asking for. Which is what zookeepers hate. That like, we're not here to perform tricks for you know, right. for you. You know, like this is not for show. We are for education, right? Which a lot of a lot of zoo goers don't really understand that. Um, they 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 want to be entertained. But that's not why we're there, you know. That's right. why because the, the the average zoo goer, it might be there like you know they'll go once every like five years, you know what I mean? Like, and it's not like they are there because they want entertainment, you know. And mm -hmm. so I, I see it's probably where the zoo is thinking, but they didn't understand the connection that was being made with you, so right. they didn't, they kind of they kind of lost that one. Yeah, they missed yeah, because I was like, no, I want to just. Like now, you know, with my podcast and with the show, I get to highlight people like you, like and and people who look like us and people who don't look like us. But I recently yeah, talked to yeah. Yeah, any, anybody in STEM, and I recently talked to some some women of color who are into sharks, and so they're really trying to bring awareness to people of color and women of color working with sharks. And it's like you know, we're out there, they're out there, people are out there doing these amazing things in STEM, and we j I just want to I just want to promote them, but you know. As a woman and someone who's tried to do TV, I, I often or I used to get all the time pre pandemic was like sex sales. So let's put mm. you in a lab coat and bikini or let's uh, have you do a science project and address in heels. And I'm like, no, that's not what that. I want to do. So when I was first getting into like YouTube, which I don't do as much YouTube right now because I'm using Facebook and Instagram. But when I first got into YouTube, I had these friends uh, who are big YouTubers. They have one of them. Uh, the brothers have two point something million followers, and then the other guy has one point something million. And you know, I was doing just you know working with them to see how they do YouTube, and they were trying to like you know talk to me about like, hey man, yeah, you know you're black. You should really talk about. They're not black. Keep this in mind. They uh, 
you should really talk about basketball and shoes. You know, I mean, you like that stuff, right? I'm like, yeah, I used to collect shoes heavily. I had over a hundred pairs of Jordans. Like I, I got a little bit left now, but I got, I sold most of them for my wedding and for my wife's ring. But that was oh. a couple, quite a few years ago. And I've only recently started buying some again. Um, and I, I love basketball. I, I used to play basketball really heavily. Um, but because their followers weren't really animal people, to, in order to get their followers to follow me, I focused my videos on basketball and shoes because that's what they wanted to see a black person do. So every now and then, in the middle of those basketball animal or basketball um, shoe videos, I would sneak in an animal <laughs> video like, hey, here's uh, you guys want to learn about uh, aardvarks real quick? You know, like, right. yeah. and then some people actually did. They were like, oh, wow, I didn't expect mm -hmm. to see that from you, but cool. I'm like, ouch, but all right, thanks for watching. <laughs> you know? mm, sting, but okay. Yeah, a little I get bit. It. Um, but yeah, I forget where I was talking. What I was talking about there. Why did I bring that up? I oh, said it. Sex, the sex sale. Yeah. So they were like Jordan. Another guy, another uh, friend of mine who was more of a Instagram influencer. He was like Jordan, man. Like you know, because this is like a couple years ago. You got to bump up your, uh, you know, your post. You got to pump up, uh, bump, pump up your, you know, your posting like with more of your face and like you know, sex sells. People don't are going to care that you have a wife. Get get her off your page. That kind of something like, ouch, dang, man. Yeah. Like, okay, right. Like, so right. I'm, like, I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah. I, yeah. So, like, today is my mom's birthday, and so I had I, I was rushing birthday, around mom. doing a bunch of stuff, and uh, so I didn't get home and put no makeup on and nothing. So I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna say something about that, but you know, whatever. It's my mom's birthday, so I I wasn't even trying to do all that, but I was still gonna do my podcast. There but uh, yeah, usually I would have had a little something. But I don't want to. I know we're running out of time. It was no, two questions on here, sorry, yeah. which was: uh, Have you ever worked with sugar gliders? No. <laughs> no. Oh well, easy one. Um, and then, yeah. what kind of birds have you worked with? Oh goodness. Okay, let's see. I'm more. You can just me, list them out. Come <laughs> on. I'm more of a mammal guy. First, first and foremost, I eat, would consider myself. Even though I consider myself a generalist, which I can do, I, I like to do a lot of different things, like a lot of different areas, like work with different animals. Um, but I would mo say I'm more mammal. But as far as birds go, I've worked with different species of owls, different birds of prey, like eagles, um, a lot of macaws, other parrots, um, uh, uh, peacocks, uh, small parrots like cockatiels and little budgies and, um, you know, different parrots. Um, Kias a little bit, worked with Kias. They're super smart. So parrots, again. Um, and that's pretty much my, oh, a lot of geese, a lot of different species of geese. Um, they were a lot of fun. Uh, who else? That's, that's, that's about some cranes here and there. That's about it, I think. I, I love owls. I, I like their it. ears that are uh, lopsided ears so that like, they can like, hear like, and like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so they can hear and, and pinpoint, and that's why they do all yeah. this, you know. And then hummingbirds, of course. I mean, you just can't not love a hummingbird, you know. And um, that's just my, that's my nerdiness. Um, let's see. We got a you got from Ashley. You should definitely promote your giving real deal content. Oh, thank you, Ashley. Uh, oh, Colleen yeah. laughed earlier at. <laughs> Something we said. I'm sorry, Colleen. I, I know I'm late on all this stuff. Um, Anthony, he said, "Yeah, this is kind of amazing." Well, not kinda. I love this, and um, <laughs> we got an all. And lastly, when I was in Nola, this woman had a parrot on a leash, and it randomly flew to my shoulder. Mm. Um, I'm gonna talk about that now. Parrots, 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 parrots. Specifically, macaws. If Oh my gosh, Colleen. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll answer that in just a second. She's, <laughs> yeah, I, I know her very well when it comes to this question here. Um, she asked the same thing on purpose to, to get me talk about <laughs> it. Anyways, parrots. Now, one of the things, whenever we have macaws at the zoo and we walk around with like, like a macaw on our arm, um, you know, to like do like a little demonstration with pe for people. 
people that are familiar with like, you know, going to Vegas or something where, you know, you'll see guys in the corner with their big gigantic parrot and say, here, here you go, mm-hmm. you can hold them. You know, our birds weren't trained to be held by strangers because mm. they're so unpredictable. Even those birds that these people are handing to you, they are also unpredictable. And for those that don't know, macaws can have a bite force of about 500 pounds per square inch per bite. And that's a broken break, finger, basically. They break fingers. So yeah. I wouldn't trust these strangers on the street. Hey, here you go. Hold my macaw. This gigantic... <laughs> That's just my personal feeling. So, but luckily, a lot of those birds are very, very since they're 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 being raised by that one person. Though they they train they raise them to like to really be into people a whole lot and are not that unpredictable. But still, we our birds we don't do that because we have a big flock and they there's a different different behaviors. They're around more birds. But let me answer Colleen's question. I guess okay. <laughs> um, Colleen asks, which is better, okapi or giraffe? Now, for the sake of Colleen, I'm going to say okapi for her because she is obsessed with okapis and they are very cool and majestic and they are considered the unicorns of the forest. And a long time ago, they were actually considered to be, uh, what do you call it, a cryptid. So people thought they were a mythical animal. Like They didn't think they were real, you know, until they were actually discovered. They're only found in one place. They're uh, endemic to the uh, de- uh, de- Democratic Republic of the Congo. So they're only found in literally one forest pocket. So they are uh, in- an endangered species. because That's the only place you can find them. And they're they're basically like a small version of a giraffe. And Kevin Hart would uh, refer to them as a deerbra. Um, <laughs> if you ever heard that joke that he did about deerbra, I'm pretty sure he was talking about the Okapi because he said it looked like a zebra, but it was mixed with a deer. So it's pretty much what okapi look like. Um, they have the stripes in the back and their hind ends, and they look like a giraffe. But you know, it's, they're odd. But they're super cool. But I personally like giraffes better. I mean, both uh, both are awesome. Like <laughs> meeting meet, you know, okapi though was like it was very magical. It's like, have you ever met okapi? No like they're like, like they're literally like 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 a real life unicorn. It's like yeah, they're super. They're calm. They're very like slow moving and very majestic looking. Like they have that really pretty red, like velvety skin fur. It's super cool. I'm more of a laboratory, or I used to be more of a laboratory animal lover from afar. Like I just love them all. I could do it a lot. I mean, I've I've dealt with smaller things, of course, from the tinier birds and. I mean, I feel like I've been bitten by so many things. I used to be in a vet tech too. So oh, okay. I've been bitten by dogs, cats, rodents, bird. Actually, birds are the only ones I've never been bitten by, thank God. Um, insects, you know, and man, all that shit. So, yeah. yes. Um, but I always wanted to educate people with it and be like, you know, like I said, like the Jack Hanna or the Jungle Jordans. <laughs> For my area, it just didn't go as well as I expected, you know, life's not over, but you know, it just didn't go as well as expected. Yeah, you know. Um, but now I'm more into promoting humans and like I get but to I, I like to promote it. humans because I always tell every human that I promote, I'm just gonna come to your job one day. And then I get to see what you do face to face, which is what I love to do. I like to be all hands on. So sure. you know. That's yeah. my goal one day. I wanna be like if you ever seen dirty jobs with Mike Rowe, oh, I yeah, be like STEM yeah. jobs with Cat Bob and I want to go to people's jobs and be like, well, what do you do? Let's that'd talk be, about STEM. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a super cool job. Uh, like, I even thought about doing something like that, but I feel like, like with zoos though. So, like, yeah. my, you know, my goal is to, like, you know, promote, I pro- like to promote the uh, career of zookeeping and, you know, aquarium keepers. I like to promote them because the, the work they're doing is very important and, and um, they're very, very hardworking people, and uh, I like right. to promote them. That's like, because that's that's my world. So, right. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that's the thing is, I like to promote STEM because 
I mean, where I grew up, especially, you know, you just don't see these jobs. You don't, you don't see, see the, yeah, you, you don't know. see people who look like you or come from your background or anything like that. That's doing that's working with sharks or they're working in Apple or they, you know, they're a mathematician and they work with right. sports. You know, you just you don't see the job behind STEM. You just keep hearing STEM like STEM, do, do STEM, do STEM, do STEM. Mm -hmm. But a lot of kids don't know what job they could actually get if mm -hmm. they was to do STEM. So. So we are out of time. Thank you everyone with all the amazing questions. I know there was one last question we didn't get to if you want to just throw it out, which is what's the most dangerous bird you've ever handled? Uh, probably the macaws because I never, like I never uh, graduated to, to putting the, the um, stellar sea eagle on a glove. Never got to do that. But they're technically a really large, scary, dangerous bird, you know, but I would definitely say the macaws just because they're so unpredictable and you know, that makes them dangerous, mm -hmm. you know? So like, uh, mm -hmm. like certain macaws that we have who have had, you know, a history of, uh, you know, liking you one minute and all of a sudden, bam, like, <laughs> <laughs> like get you. and, and yeah. I, I had a track record of never being bit by any animals until, uh, this past, this past year, I, one of the birds got me, unfortunately, and I was a little sad about it. Um, actually, it was last month. Very sad. It got me right in my uh, right in my arm, and it wasn't even my fault. And she, when she did it, she it was like a little bit of misplaced aggression because like she got a little too close. To, I was carrying her, and she got too close to this other bird that she doesn't like, and <laughs> they uh, were almost close to like lot like uh, you know clashing. But yeah. I pulled her away fast enough, and she was so angry at him. She kind of like you know took her aggression out on my arm that she was sitting on. I, I was like, hey, why did you do that? She looks at me and goes, oh. Like, you can see that. I was like, oh, I didn't mean that to do it to you. I was like, yeah, well, you just did. So she got me, unfortunately. It's a small little scar now. But my track, I, I had never before that, I had never been bitten by an animal I had ever worked with. So I was very proud of that. I can't no say bird. that. Like I said, I've been yeah. bitten by no snakes, pretty much no. all species except for birds. Uh, well, they're coming. Just you wait. Including human. But that's a whole nother story. That's, oh. We don't even talk about that oh. one. That, okay. You want to hear about the human that bit me? Yeah, that's another story. Um, <laughs> it was an adult. It was an adult. It wasn't even a kid. But uh, as we close, how can people know, find out more about you, find you, things like that? Sure. Well, everyone can find me at Jungle Jordan 23 on all social media outlets, TikTok included. Uh, I don't post on TikTok anymore because I'm I get tired of that. Um, but Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, my most active areas right now are Facebook and Instagram. So you can find me at Jungle Jordan 23 on all those. I should be the only one. Cool beans, cool beans. So if you hold on, I'll close out and uh, let everyone go except for you. So oh, we got to thank you, Kat and Jungle Jordan. Cool thank you, Christian and Christian, I believe. That was yes. a little zero. Yeah, Christian. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Jungle Jordan, for being a part of the show. Give me just one minute. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Uh, make sure you go to catbobino.com to see other episodes. You can also find me on uh, my YouTube channel, which is Cat Bobino. You can message me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Just like Jungle Jordan, everything is Cat Bobino. So easy to find. Um, nobody should have my name. And so that should be good. Make sure you join us next week as we continue our conversation with great individuals in STEM. And I hope you all have, are having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. And uh, happy birthday to my mom. Thank you.